Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today's video has nothing to do with makeup and depending on how you found this video, you already know that. But what I am going to do today is I'm going to be extracting some of my own DNA. We have to do this practical at home for one of my classes and it's actually quite cool to see. So I thought I'd record how I do it and show the internet. I wrote down the steps and everything I'm going to need in here and the basic experiment is I'm going to take some of the cells from the inside of my cheek and use some ethanol to have it precipitate and then I have to take a picture of what it looks like and I have to submit it with my assignment where I have to answer a bunch of other questions regarding DNA extraction and genetic things in general. So the things you're going to need are the following. You need a salt solution that I'm going to make myself. So for that I'm going to need half a cup of water and half a teaspoon of ordinary salt. Then I'm just going to mix the two together in the glass. Next I'm going to need some dishwashing liquid that I keep in an old shampoo bottle so that it squirts out with a pump. An empty cup to spit in and lastly 30 milliliters of chilled 99.9% .9 ethanol. So most of these things you're going to have around your house like dishwashing soap and salt and all that. Ethanol not so much. This is the type of alcohol that you drink but you can't use your whiskey or anything like that. But we were given this on campus to use for this experiment. And if you do genetics or microbiology or anything of the sort, there's always ethanol available. I'm sure you can just ask your lab if you need it. But you're going to have to have a really good excuse because I know like high school labs are very reluctant to give you anything, especially to take home. So make sure you ask the right person if you really need it. So basically the steps are you're going to need to make sure your mouth is clean, loosen up some cells, swirl some salt water in your mouth, spit it out, add some dishwashing liquid and then add it to the ethanol so the DNA can participate. Precipitate? Participate? It's one of those words. The right one is precipitate. P-R-E-C-I-P-I-T-A-T-E. Do I really hope I spelled that right? I'm not made for spelling bees. Now even though this is a very easy, very simple experiment, I want it to look all official. So, I have a lab coat so I might just as well wear it. And technically, according to the MSDS of ethanol, you have to wear one and your goggles and you have to keep it off your skin and all that jazz. I will have the important parts of the MSDS listed in the description for if you're actually going to work with ethanol. But I've worked with ethanol numerous times in the past and I know how it works and I know what to do with it. So I am doing it in a safe way, even though ethanol is definitely one of the safer things you could be working with. So, step one, you have to rinse out and clean your mouth to make sure you have no food particles in your mouth because you don't want to be spitting out your cells and then you get like a chunky or carrot from lunch in there. So, I'm gonna brush my teeth. Okay, so teeth brushed and mouth rinsed. Next step, I need to make my salt solution. So what I have is half a cup of water and I'm gonna put in half a teaspoon of normal table salt. So I have the salt in here and I'm just stirring it to make sure it dissolves. You're gonna need a lot more than half a teaspoon to saturate this amount of water. So everything you put in is supposed to dissolve. And now I have some salt water. By the way, when you put this in your mouth, you're gonna feel if you have anything like bitten or sore in your mouth, like if that lollipop from last week gave you a little cut on your mouth, this is gonna show you. The next step is I need to chew the inside of my cheeks for 45 seconds. So basically, you know like when you bite your cheek like that, not just biting, but like chewing on my cheeks. I'm going to do that for 45 seconds. And the point is to loosen the dead epithelial cells on the inner surface of my cheeks. And I'm just going to do that for a few seconds, but make sure you don't swallow because then obviously you're going to swallow all the cells you've knocked loose by chewing your cheeks and you're not going to be able to spit them out so that you can get the DNA from them. So you're just going to chew and make sure you don't swallow until you're done, basically. Also, you're not going to want to chew so much that your mouth bleeds because one, ow, and number two, blood has a slightly acidic pH because of the carbon dioxide it has in it. So if you have blood in your sample that's going to be the saliva on your mouth, it's going to change the pH of your experiment and that will influence your result and it'll give it a slightly off pinkish color, which you don't want. So definitely don't bite yourself so that you bleed, just chew a bit. And then obviously because you need to swallow to speak and I'm not allowed to swallow, I'm going to tell you what the next step is already. After I've chewed my cheeks for 45 seconds, I'm going to put a little bit of the salt mixture in my mouth, swirl it around so that I'm mixed with all the saliva and cells in there, and I'm going to spit it into the clean cup. And I'm going to try to spit out as much as possible because the more I have, the larger is my sample, the more visible the DNA will be because there will be more at the end of the day. So again, 
chew my cheeks for a few seconds, swirl my mouth with some salt water for 20 seconds, and then spit it into a cup. Speak to you in a few. And my laptop's over there and I'm watching movies because I can't sit and do nothing for a minute, apparently. So that's what I'll be looking at. So what I have in this cup now is a mixture of my saliva, some of my cells, and some of the salt water. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to add a single drop of washing detergent. The type you use to wash your dishes, I'm just going to use some normal sunlight liquid. And the whole purpose of using this is it breaks down lipids or fats, right? Lipids and fats, the same thing. And your nuclear membrane are made out of lipids. So by breaking them down, you actually free up the DNA from inside the cells. You kind of loosened up the DNA a bit by chewing on your cheeks because that's a mechanical way of breaking up the cell membrane. But to break it down even more and to make sure the DNA is as exposed as you're going to get it, you want to break down those lipid layers and therefore you're going to add a drop of detergent. You don't want too much because you don't want it to foam, so just a drop is more than enough. And then I'm carefully going to take the back of my teaspoon and just swirl it in here until I don't see it anymore because then it's kind of dissolved into the liquid. But again, you don't want to like froth it up so that you have any more foam than you already have in here because you're going to lose some of your DNA to the foam. It's been about 30 seconds, so I'm carefully going to take out my teaspoon and move on to the next step where I'm going to pour this down the side of my ethanol container. I don't want to just splash it in here, I'm going to pour it down the side carefully and slowly. So I'm going to open it up and it's going to smell like alcohol because it is alcohol and alcohol is very volatile. So be prepared for that. And this lid is on tight so now I'm afraid of it popping open and messing on everything. Okay, disaster avoided. Hallelujah. I'm going to take this and like I said, slowly pour it down the side, trying not to spill it all over myself. see there are two layers this top part that's the ethanol and this bottom part that is the saliva funky mixture going on and this that you see in the middle this white kind of cloudy part that you see drifting in there is the DNA that's already precipitating out and it's floating upwards it was originally right in between the two layers and now it's floating up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this toothpick which might be a little bit too short for it and I'm gonna kind of mix the two layers gently kind of folding them together to get more DNA than just this bit at the top. I want to get as much out as possible and for that I need as much contact as possible between the ethanol and my mixture with my cells. The murkiness in here, that's the DNA floating in here in little strings. I'm gonna leave it for a bit a little bit to settle at the top kind of and then you can use a stick to bring it together but it kind of sticks to the toothpick I used so I don't want to get it in there more because I feel I'm just going to pick it up instead of bring it together. So I'm going to leave this for a bit and then I'm going to take a picture of it. And then that is the basics of DNA extraction. It's quite easy to do. It's quite quick to do as well. I did it in my lab last year for the first time with cereal and it was really weird to see that there's DNA in your cereal. You don't really think about it that way. And I have to say, this is the first time in my life I'm seeing my own DNA. That's a new experience. I ain't going to lie to you. But it's cool. I did it now and I'm happy with my assignment. I hope this helped you in some way or it was at least interesting. And then I'll see you again next time. Bye!